Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our first hot topic, and this one talks about the abducted students of Confluence University being rescued. Now, some of the abducted students of the University of Science, Confluence University of Science and Technology, or Sarah Okene, in Kogi State have been rescued. The state government has confirmed. In a statement on Sunday, the Kogi State Commissioner for Information and Communication, Kinsley Fanwa, said the students were res rescued safely by local hunters and other security agencies. Now joining us to have a conversation is a security expert, he's Augustine Egger. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. My pleasure joining you this morning. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're talking about um, kidnapping. In fact, kidnapping has been on a rise lately in Nigeria, where maybe every other month or every other week, we are hearing that someone is being kidnapped in the papers or in the press. And now those are just some of the stories that we hear. There are others that don't make it there. So we know that there's been a major rise in kidnapping lately in Nigeria. And now they go into schools, not just schools, not just universities, is, even though that's what we're talking about today but you see primary schools as well little children being kidnapped um, by all of these criminals and terrorists asking for huge ransoms so first i want to ask what what has caused the prevalence of you know kidnapping or you know such criminality in nigeria why are we here because i'm sure that i mean we've not seen that as much in years before now but lately in nigeria there's been a rise there's been this prevalence of this what is your take why are we here now where every other week or every other month you're hearing of kidnapping stories yes i i think uh, one of the things we're experiencing we don't want to learn nigeria don't want to learn from the past mm. uh, when these things happen they are supposed to have a system that will correct this we don't need to go through that route all the time. And because they are not doing it, the industry has become uh, very thriving for those people who want to engage in those activities. Mm. First, we had the chipo. But I think if you go through schools, you see that schools are not well secure. Most schools are not well secure. Mm. So uh, the criminals, criminal minds, uh, they, target, they target the weakness in any system uh, to do away with whatever they want to do with. So currently, what you can see is that they don't have a strong security in schools. And so they, they insist or they, 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 they take advantage of that, uh, that weaknesses and continue to perpetrate this act. Hmm. So if it's, I, I know that kidnapping now has become a very lucrative business because when you hear of the ransoms that they ask for, there are millions, sometimes hundreds of millions um, for this. And so, you know, people would just think to themselves, how can I make that quick money? And yeah. But would you would you say that aside the fact that the system is weak, which we'll get into, would you say that unemployment is also one of the major issues especially with the hyperinflation in Nigeria. Do you think those are some factors um, that has made kidnapping become a thriving business? I don't, I don't think so, uh, because uh, uh, crime, is as, crime is as old as bank. Mm. Crime is as old as mankind. So it's a choice. No matter what people are still making, uh, uh, they are still pursuing their life in a genuine way and make a living, making a living for themselves. It's just a fallout uh, from their own perspective to go into crime. So it's not an excuse. Unemployment is not an excuse to engage in criminal activities. Mm. Uh, but if there's deterrent, a strong deterrent and a, a, a very strong check, I'm sure that by now they would have discouraged this element. But now we see that it's growing. It's rapidly growing. That means there's no check. Mm. Mm. So talking about the... I know it's not an excuse because... I mean, the former president of Nigeria, Olisha Gombasanje, said a few months ago that one of the major issues why we're seeing kidnapping and terrorism is because um, of unemployment and the government isn't doing so much. And in fact, um, today he has also said that Nigeria is a complex country, but it's not so difficult to govern. And with that being said, and taking what you just said as well, saying we need a deterrent or having those checks in place, why, why do you think the government isn't putting enough checks in place, especially with the fact that Chipok happened years ago? And now you're seeing this, you know, this same trend 
coming back in full force whereby they've gone as low as taking primary school students um, or pupils. So why do you think the government isn't doing so much when it comes to securing the lives and properties of Nigerians? Well, I, uh, the only second of us enjoy the former president, he has his perspective on this. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that if something happens, uh, any security threat or incident that we experience is for us uh, to do something different. They have known uh, from time, from the chief of saying that uh, the schools are vulnerable. When schools are vulnerable, uh, it means that they have to strengthen the security architecture in schools, meaning they have to even have armed men in schools, especially the universities and all schools in short. They should do a good environmental profiling. And so that they know they reinforce security in those areas. But now we don't see that. Even when the Chibo case happened, it is still happening in many schools, even the universities. We don't see uh, a, a, a strong, capable hands, capable security guidance being uh, uh, deployed in those areas. And so the criminal minds, they profile the environment before they carry out attacks. They know that security system in some of these schools are weak. And that's why they're still doing it. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, and I mean, I was looking at the Nigerian constitution, the 1999 constitution, and I read um, uh, section 14, subsection 2b says the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of the government. And then um, the C says, and the participation by the people in their government shall be ensured in accordance with the provisions of this constitution. So we're talking about the security and welfare of Nigerians. I mean, it's right here enshrined in the constitution and that's what I'm reading out from. Why is the government not making this paramount? Why, is it not why are they not making it imperative that the security of you know Nigerians is you know, at the peak, because you're even aside of schools, you're hearing of villages of um, where people are being killed, maimed, kidnapped. You're hearing of farms where people cannot go to their farms and these terrorists are taking them over. What we're talking about insecurity, I don't even think it's all about the schools. It's almost everywhere. So why is the government not doing this? Especially, does it mean that we do not respect the 1999 constitution anymore? or we just do whatever we like. I just want to get your take because you are a security expert. So if this is enshrined in our constitution, why is that not, you know, what is paramount to everyone in Nigeria, including the politicians who have sworn by this same 1999 constitution that they are going to save the lives and properties of Nigerians. And here in the constitution, it says the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose. That is a very... Um, profound word the primary purpose but we're not seeing that so what should what do you think the government is supposed to be doing that they are not doing uh, let me let me let me take it from what uh, president Oluchegu uh, your former president have said that mm. nigeria is a very complex state mm. why is it complex uh, because from where they are coming from their own time nigeria has grown and has become one of the most populous a populous country the most populous country in africa when a people or a problem becomes too big and complex, you break it down and solve that problem. So what am I saying here? We are saying that the state policing is something that will break this big insecurity problem into a smaller bit. Mm. And every governor will see how they can implement a specific architecture that will work in the environment. Because it is not all implementation that will work in every state. That is something they should have done before now, and they are still dragging feet on this. State policing will help, will go a long way to checkmate all this because the problem will become smaller. The people in each state know the local government, they know where the threat will come. In fact, they will even know if uh, it's an invasion from the outside or within. So problems like insecurity can be tackled when they break that problem into little bits, implement the, 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 the state policing. And that is one thing that we're still waiting till now. <laughs> So uh, I understand that state police would definitely help because I think with if you have a state police, they understand the terrain, you know, of wherever they're looking after. They know the nook and crannies. It's it's just easier. 
I wonder why it's taking so long for them to implement that. But while we're still waiting for that, let's move over to the universities because this story that we're looking at is about people being abducted from their university. So what can you know the university do? Because if the government is not going to make sure that you're secured, then you should do something for yourself. What can they do to ensure that you know there's no insecurity or there's no weakness, like you said, um, there? Because people will always thrive on that. For instance, instance if the, if you know a terrorist knows that i can easily go here you know take people ask for money then they probably would just do that because you've given them you know um a leeway to to perpetuate that act but when they know that it is difficult if i go there their security agents this place is heavily guarded then i can't just penetrate through the system um, it would kind of like make sure that it serves as a deterrent for them to come. So what can the universities do? Maybe collaborate with the government if the government is willing to do that. But for themselves, taking matters into their own hands, what can they do to ensure that they are secured and their students are not just being kidnapped? Because some of them don't make it alive, let's be honest. Hmm. Yes, um, the university environment is one of the most complex environments in terms of security, securing the lives of and uh, property of the people there. Mm. Why? Uh, because some of the students come from different backgrounds. They come from complex environment as well. And it's like a, a marketplace where you gather people with different attitudes, some people with different mindsets. And so that's why it's such a very uh, difficult environment to handle. But then, integrated security approach is what will work in every university uh, because um if uh, they bring in law enforcement which is the government forces uh is just an aspect of the entire implementation of the security system so that is a uh, uh the armed men that will come and work and secure that place is just one aspect they should have surveillance cameras all over the universities there are fences and uh, major entry points this is very important the profiling of the students inside, which could be uh, who, 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 who could who could do the handshake from the outside, because some of these students inside, some are not students. Mm. I can tell you that you go to some campuses, some are not students, but they just like they hide they hide there uh, because they cannot be figured out easily. So these students, uh, they should be you should you should be profiled, and armed men should come. They should also implement uh, CCTV cameras all through uh, the streets and areas of universities. When they have this, other processes will work as well to uh, solve the insecurity problem in schools. So okay. you can't leave it for the government. It's something that the VCs and the people, the authorities in school have to take it as a very serious business. Because if the school is insecure, there's no how they can achieve their goal. Talking about surveillance cameras, um, I just wonder how that would work because putting surveillance camera is one thing in a place, but then if you're not really monitoring it, then nothing is being done. It's, it's null and void. In fact, you having to actually put that there, there was no reason whatsoever. And then uh, I'm saying this because lately, I think last week or two weeks ago, there was someone who tried to steal the CCTV camera from Third Mainland Bridge right so when you hear of theft they happen and even if they put this in schools i'm wondering how they would ensure that those things are secure that's the surveillance cameras now for because if they're not there or if no one is monitoring the, that people can still come in don't you think so aside the surveillance camera what else can they do to ensure that people like the, the the universities are heavily fortified and people cannot just come in there and penetrate the system. Yes, that's why I said it's an integrated security approach. Integrated meaning you bring many solutions to one okay. place. Okay. One solution cannot work. So if mm. you if you if you plant surveillance cameras and there's nobody monitoring it, it's not it's, the aim is defeated. Yeah. But when you plant, there are always there will always have areas that are critical in every environment. You always have critical points where people can get in easily. You also don't forget that you cannot, when I mean integrated, you also have uh, alarm systems that work mm. side by side. And some intelligent cameras are cameras that can easily pick uh, human activity. Mm. They have some kind of a configuration that if there's any movement around there, it will focus and then trigger an alarm in the center. So there okay. must be a center yeah. where these things are monitored. Mm. 
Mm. There must be a center. So there also be a response team on ground. Mm. They should have an, an armed response team on ground where they, they receive a threat message and then the deployment person will deploy the armed people to that place. So it's seamless. Yeah. It's not something like just plant cameras and then you forget about it. Someone has to be there 24 hours to monitor it. Mm -hmm. And there must be an armed team 24 hours to respond to any threat. That is how it works. I mean, you've just spoken like a proper security expert, and I love how you've you know broken that down. And I think that's even something I can trust. You have the the surveillance cameras, you have people who are monitoring that, you have the alarm system, you know, going off if they see any human activity. You have the response team um, who you know comes there as swiftly as possible. And I think if we have that, definitely that would just work. That might just deter people from coming and this whole kidnapping cases that we hear of would be minimal. I know people, human beings love crime. So something else, they will always, you know, look for other ways. In fact, start to manufacture, manufacture other means. But at least if we can put it at the minimal, then that would work for us all. But then uh, that is from the university side. Yes. Knowing that the federal government, they have a, um, they have a primary purpose. They have something that they're supposed to do, which is ensuring that the lives and properties of Nigerians are safe. What can the government do in this case to collaborate with the universities who are also doing their bits as well? What can the government do? Uh, I think uh, what the government can do first, let's say um, there should be laws. I don't mm -hmm. know if they, they say tomorrow they tell us they have those laws. Uh, they should also make uh, very strong laws that will deter people want to go into that act of criminality. Mm -hmm. Very stringent laws. So that is where they can help. And secondly, um, we still need more armed men, more policing. They should increase uh, the number of because actually the population of Nigeria, the way it's growing, we see that we need more policemen. Mm. because of the population because without that they can't contain the crime uh, that is what government can do for us and i think they should also the vcs uh the leaders of these universities should understand that security is their business mm. and without security they cannot operate but some take it an aftermath or some like after all security should be number one priority even when they are setting up the university the site where they want to locate that university security should be considered Mm. Is that environment going to be vulnerable, especially enabling the kidnapping and other crimes? But they just, I sometimes when I, I drive by, I just see them site universities where ordinary they should not site universities. Mm. And later they, say, they start having all these kidnap issues. So they should always from the beginning carry security, have security in mind. Where are you citing this university? What is the crime profiling of that environment before you site the university in that place? Mm. Else, no matter what you have implemented, they are still going to have problems. So it starts from the beginning. Hmm. Before you make a site, you make a decision to site the university, carry security experts along to advise. We have a way we profile risks and then give you information about that environment. When they do that from the start, and while they are building, there are certain architecture that should be made in place as they are building the, 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 the structures. They should build security, security along. Not when they have finished the whole university, you finish yeah. the whole structure, then you now consider security. Mm -hmm. It's always difficult then, it's more expensive. I, 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 I totally agree with you because from the beginning, it determines what would happen in the middle and even towards the end. So if you're not having the security experts coming to look at this place, ensuring that there is no high risk, then what are you doing? And at the end of the day, parents are sending their, their children to these schools because they expect that they will come back to meet them. So they are expecting you to actually try to ensure that the security of the students is paramount to you, aside taking the fees. So you're getting the fees, but then you're still ensuring that these children, they are safe. But you said something about laws and you know having laws to serve as a deterrent to people, stringent laws. For instance, you hear of repentant Boko Haram, um, a member, was just released and put back into, into the society. You see that a lot um, that's happening in, in Nigeria. And I'm just wondering, if this person was a Boko Haram member, this person was a terrorist, how do you put that person back? Guess what? After a while, they might just decide to go back to their old ways. So what can we do to ensure that 
if for instance we see someone who was a kidnapper or a terrorist i'm not saying people don't change i'm not saying do not give people second chances it's okay too but you need to be sure knowing that you are putting them back into a society where they've perpetrated those crimes so how can we have those really strict laws to ensure that they just don't come back out in as much as you want to rehabilitate them and you know give them a better life but there should be like some form of correctional center that they stay for for a long time and you're sure that this person is now a good person this person can come back into the society and there will be bet the society will be better for it not that the society would be scared or terrorized by this same person what can the nigerian government do about that because we don't want repentant we don't want to hear that word repentant boko haram member again repentant mm -hmm. repentant terrorist what can we do yeah i, I think when we were growing up we met in nigeria where they had those correctional centers and they yeah. also had treat various treats that the uh, people who are in prison they learned so uh, they learned a lot of treats yeah and over then there were this there was this leveling even if you learn a trade and come out from prison you are leveled in the society as a criminal mm. or an ex-convict mm. i think that is also a strategy from those who are criminalists they know that leveling is a deterrent on its own mm. that because they will level you you'll be scared to even get involved in that crime mm. this in quote repentant boko haram i don't know from which premise uh <laughs> they, they they see them as repentant is it because they they are they are they have been taken into custody and they see how quiet and normally most bad criminals are <laughs> hello sir hello mr augustine i think we just lost mr augustine's audio but we're talking about, um, uh, you know, insecurity in our universities and the fact that we keep hearing of kidnapping stories um, every other week, every other month. And then uh, just recently, um, people have been, students have been kidnapped in Conference University in Kogi State, although they've been rescued, which the Kogi State government has confirmed. But how can we ensure that, you know, people's lives and properties are safe in nigeria and um augustine Ega is a security expert and he's just been talking to us on things that we can do in fact one of the things he said was if you're going to cite a university for instance you need to take security experts there to be able to tell you if this place is a high risk or not um another thing he said was you know having stringent laws to ensure that um, people who are perpetrating this type of crime are you know they don't want to do it it serves as a deterrent um for them and then he also broke down some some things that the university can do as well um one of which is having surveillance cameras another is making sure that those cameras have alarms with them so if there's any human activity um the alarms just blare off and then there's a response team 24 hours response team waiting um for this so if there's any criminal activity for for instance the response team you know just goes there and then if these people are apprehended obviously there are stringent laws where they have to go to prison face you know the justice system and that would just probably help us as well um another question i want going to ask him was you know funding from the federal government on things like this because we're talking tech we're talking human resources response team that's going to take a whole lot of money. And I was going to ask how the government can actually fund and collaborate with this, um, um, with these universities, but sadly we lost his audio and I'm just hoping that another time we can get him back and go in depth with it. But this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic, which talks about the crisis in River State. Please stay with us.